would be looks particularly beautiful with a cloudless sky as we've got today. No sign bird-wise of any great green shrike this year, at least not one that I know has been reported. But it won't be long before these blue skies are echoing to the sound of the woodlark's song, one of the most enigmatic songs and typical of Nottinghamshire Heathland now. Woodlark is a bird that has done very, very well in the last 20 years or so. If this very mild start to 2022 continues for any length of time, and in all honesty it is very likely to, then it'll only be a matter of weeks before one of Sherwood Forest's typical early moths appears, and it's a day flying moth. It's the orange underwing, which is a really beautifully marked moth, and as the name suggests, the hind wings or the underwings are orange. It's a gorgeous thing, and it's typically seen flitting around at about treetop height. Now these birches in front are about 30 feet high, so anything around there, 25 to 30 feet, sometimes lower, depending on the time of day and the conditions. But a day like today is ideal. They appear very much like a small, fluttering, small tortoiseshell butterfly, but are quite different in flight. It pays to watch insects in flight, because it makes identification of things that are in flight a lot easier. Now the orange underwing is a moth which is by no means restricted to the Sherwood Forest area of Nottinghamshire. Indeed it can be found as far north in the county as the Idle Valley. It's a species well worth looking out for and it has the habit of later in the day flying lower. And it can be found or often disturbed from muddy puddles during the morning or in the afternoon when it comes down and drinks and takes salt. From the water and from the ground. If you ever want to try and catch it, don't waste your time during the morning. Leave it until late afternoon when the moths tend to fly at head height. And the larval food plant is birch, and luckily there's still some here. It's another glorious day again. Just starting to warm up now. My next plan of attack is to walk down here and check the banks that are on the left of this winding track. I still think that there is little hope of finding an early oil beetle, despite the conditions being suitable. The oil beetle's distribution on Budby as local as it is, and completely confined to this western end of Budby, is changing, and certainly has changed drastically in the number of years since it was first discovered here. And it was discovered along this track that leads away from where the camera's standing now. At one time of day, this was the main track, and all the counting and the surveying that Dillis and I did for the oil beetle was based around e this track and either side of the track. But the track itself has changed. It's no longer bare ground. It used to be a bare track with just a, a narrow ridge of grass and heather running through the centre. Purpose built habitat for the oil beetle and for solitary bees has been created away from the path. Numbers have declined and the decline in the oil beetle here is worrying. And this illustrates 
part of the big problem regarding oil beetles and the reason why oil beetles no longer use this path. At one time a day you could walk down this little stretch and find several females excavating burrows or in the process of egg laying inside the burrows that they make. The burrows are only a couple of inches deep, usually about the same length as a female oil beetle. And once the eggs are laid, and they lay enormous amounts of eggs, the female leaves the burrow. There's no attempt to fill the burrow in. But it's this, as you look at the screen now, it's this right hand sort of furrow down here, look. And it's the, the right hand edge of that furrow. That all used to be bare, sandy and stony ground. That's that right hand side of that furrow is where the majority of female oil beetles used to dig and fill the burrows with eggs. That's gone now. And yet to recreate it, it's a simple matter. It's just a matter of scraping this path. It's a something that's just very easy. So, you know, to recreate the conditions that only a few years ago suited the oil beetle perfectly. I just wish they'd done that, reinstated this path, like they've done a lot of other paths on Budby. They never touched this one. They just did some scrapes for... Although they are used by oil beetles, you could still have oil beetles on this bit. But an additional problem with this path was the footfall. It's surprisingly well used, even though this is probably the quietest part of Budby. And a, a number of oil beetles were certainly crushed underfoot annually. <laughs> 